All right. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking shingles. I know, I know there's so much out there on shingles already. What makes this different? The fact is, most of these videos out here are talking about this is the best shingle, that's the best shingle. Bull crap. Today, it's kind of like Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. You drive what you like. Don't worry about it because they're all pretty close to even across the board. But what we're going to talk about today is really cost versus value. Where is my money best spent? Do I do a three tab roof? I will put a three tab roof on my house if I can save enough money. Right now you can't. It's not much cheaper than a normal 30 year architectural shingle. And there's way more to go with an architectural than there is to go over with that three tab. So, that's what we want to cover. Is a steel roof really the route I want to go? Where is my money best spent? Only you're going to know that. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to give you the information for you to make the decision for you, how you want your roof installed and what products do you want on your roof. I'm not going to talk about certainty better than Timberline or any of that other things. What we're here to talk about is lifespan. How can I put so much money into my roof but yet make 30 years out of it? My insurance companies are now telling me it's 15 years old. I don't care what you do, you have to replace that roof. How many of you have gotten that phone call or that letter in the mail? And yep, you may have to do a re-roof. I'm not there to look at your roof. Your roof may be failing. All right, let's do this thing. Welcome to Let's DIY My Home, where like-minded people are working together to tackle their project. Everything from a complicated remodel to as simple as repairing a door. That's Let's DIY My Home dot com. We'll see you there. All right. 25 year, three tab, asphalt shingles. Lifespan is 12 years. That is truly accurate. On a 30 year architectural shingles, you're going to get a whopping 15, not 30. Under certain applications, you have the correct underlayments, you have the correct ventilation in that house. Yes, I do firmly believe you can hit 30 years. I've done it on my last home. So I know it can be done, but the majority of the homes are not done correctly. They're either not installed according to the manufacturer's specifications, the ventilation isn't proper, they still have the old square vents. Heck, on a 40 foot run, I've seen as little as five vents across that thing. That is not enough ventilation in that attic to make that shingle last. There is your 15 year roof. Oh, we're gonna put synthetic felt on my new roof. There is your 12 year roof, okay? And we're gonna get into that too. So synthetic is not the winner, but you definitely wanna stick this out because it is going to be very educational and very informative for you. Now. Let's talk about metal roofs. You got 50 year asphalt roofs that are lasting 30, but yet we have a 50 year metal roof. So this sounds like to me, my best money is gonna be in a metal roof. But it truly is not. You see, my last home, I could have put a new roof on it. I chose not to. I'm not going to live in that house long enough to recoup the money. And we're gonna talk about that too. So let's look at the facts on a three tab roof. These things are slowly windering out. I'm down here in Florida and I just drove by, I don't know if it was a funeral home or I don't know, what, that's where they belong, okay? Or what it was, but I saw a three tab all over a building that has hurricane winds coming across it. To me, that is concerning. That should not be. Florida, if you allow three tab roofs here, you need to outlaw them, okay? There is no way a man's kind that shingle is gonna uphold that type of wind. The fact is, not only is a 25 year product only good for 12, unless you have proper and everything and all your dots and eyes are teated properly, is gonna make it. Let alone, most shingles put on in Florida, I don't care where you at, I checked this roof here that I'm at, is four nail. If you four nail a three tab roof, that's a 60 mile an hour wind. Right here, see? It even tells you 60 miles an hour is what it's rated for. Well, let me rephrase that. It'll withstand 60 mile an hour wind. Doesn't mean that a 40 mile an hour wind 
can't lift the shingles and break them off because it sure as hell can. So why are we wanting to do these? Because we think we're saving money. Today, we're not. The manufacturers, because they don't want to manufacture three-tab shingles anymore, have jacked the price. Today, your average cost on a three-tab roof is $102 a square just for the three-tab shingles. Folks, on a 2,600-square-foot roof, you actually got $2,600 worth of shingles. Keep that in mind, because here's what's going to happen. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Six nail that shingle, and it turns into a 110-mile-an-hour wind less chance of those tabs breaking off. You see a three tab, you got five inches high and 12 inches wide. Each tab, the shingle's three foot long, I understand that. But every tab is only 12 inches, so the wind rating is affecting that one tab. That's why when we look up the roof sometimes, we see a black spot on the three tab roof where the tab got ripped off. Because 60 mile an hour was wind resistance. Again, six nail it, you can get it to 110. That still don't cut it in Minnesota. So let's talk about architecturals. You got malarkey, you got timberline, duration, IKOs, and oh my God, the IKO. The world's worst shingle in the world. Now they have actually, I don't know what they're doing, but it appears IKO is starting to compete with the big boys. They're pulling their stuff together and actually uh, uh, making a good product today. Doesn't mean it's a product I'd put on my home and think about this and search the internet. Let the internet speak for itself. It can be your friend, but you still have to use due diligence. Right now, 80% of the complaints through IKO are never resolved. Go do your own research. Malarkey, it's available in my neighborhood up in Minnesota. They are sold on malarkey. I, I, I don't know if I want to call it malarkey or it is malarkey. Okay, but they're putting a whole lot of product on it. I don't know a lot about it. I do know the fact that it does hold a little bit more weight than your traditional asphalt shingle. Wind ratings, they're not listing them. I have yet to find one. And um, we go from there. Uh, Timberlines, we are GAF certified, makes a good product, so is Owens Corning, I'm certified by OC, Owens Corning makes it a hell of a good product, then you got, uh, oh I didn't even list it on here, <laughs> uh, the granule loss capital of the world, certain teed, okay that's as far as I'm going to go with that, I'm not here to dog products. Um, you do your due diligence and determine which product is best for you and go from there. What we're going to be talking about is different grades of shingles and where your best money is spent. On a 30-year architectural shingle, architectural shingles are available in a 30-year, 40-year, and a 50-year. You determine what's best for you. Your typical 30-year product is going to get you 15. Your 40-year product is going to get you somewhere around 20. Typically, it's half. And if you, again, and I can't preach it enough, you have the correct underlayments and the correct uh, ventilation in the home, you can, in fact, maximize that shingle's life. So what the manufacturer says is that shingle's not guaranteed to make 40 years. That's the maximum they found that they could make it last, you see. And if you're a DIYer and you're doing the installs yourself, read the package. Most of them, if they, memory serves me right, and it's been a long time since I read the package, so it could have changed. But at roughly 10 years, and you're done. Incidentally, so you also understand that, because the fact is shingles are man-made, they can fail. When they do fail, the manufacturer is not responsible to pay for your felts. They're not responsible to pay for your uh, dumpsters. They're not responsible to pay for your labor. If the product fails within its warranty period, you can expect either get a refund on a certain percentage because they're going to depreciate it just the same as the package states, or they're going to bring a load of pallets of shingles and drop them in your yard. You're fully responsible for the rest. That's just how the game works. If you have a certified installer do it, that's a whole different ball game. Okay. But this is more of a DIY project, but I just want you to understand how this actually works. 
50 year is a 25 year shingle. You see? Now, you use synthetic felt, well, you can take that 25 year and just turn it into 20. You lost life in that product. The average cost, I'm going to explain that a little bit more here in a moment. The average cost of an architectural 30 year shingle is 120. So if you have a 26 square house, crap, I don't have my calculator. That would be approximately $3,000. Roughly $400 more than what it would be for a three tab roof. You see what I'm saying? So not only do we, got a, we go from a 60 mile an hour wind for $400 more, we also get 130 mile an hour wind resistance versus the 60. We go from a 25 year to a 30 year. What about looks? The architectural shingles, my goodness, they are nice looking. Versus a three tab? Ugh. There's no reason we should even, for $400, why are you even thinking of it? You're not saving any money, okay? Now, if you go into a 50 year, because you remember, lifespan on a 30 year shingle is what? 15, right? And that costed us what? $3,000 on a 30 year architectural. If we step it up to a 50 year, uh, it could be a storm or a related shingle. Uh, Owens Corning calls it the storm, matter of fact. GAF also has a hail impact heavy storm resistant shingle. These are 50 year architectural shingles. Now there's other uh, uh, styles that are available that are 50 year as well. I'm not getting into all the different styles. I'm just talking about warranties, uh, product life versus dollar here, okay? So when we look at the 50 year, because we don't like the fact, and I think you'll agree with me, you don't like the fact that that 30-year uh, product is only w insured for 15 years. At least that's all the insurance companies want it on your home for without you replacing it. Now, note, you can have an engineer come out, verify that the roof is perfectly good order, and you can submit that to your insurance company that the roof is good for many more years, and you're fine. But it's a lot of hassle and that's another 500 bucks. You can order a contractor to do it too, so you understand that. But the fact is if you order the contractor to do it, you get what you get because he also wants the work. You see what I mean? So sometimes uh, if he tells you you need a new roof, I would definitely get a second opinion before I went ahead and did a new roof. That's just my two cents. There's a little form you have to fill out for the insurance companies. Now, on a 50 year, 50-year shingles runs about $85 to $100 a square more, depending on the uh, brand of shingle you pick. So in other words, that'd be $2,600 more on a re-roof over the $3,000, almost double. But if you're not paying labor because you're doing it yourself, so you're going to spend five grand, you double the life of that roof. So now instead of it being 15, it's 30. And if you actually do not use synthetic felt and you decide, I'm going to get a bunch of friends together, we're going to tear this half off this weekend, we're going to install the ice and water, whatever our code requirements are, install 30 pound felt, not the synthetic felt, and I'm going to explain to you that in a minute. Put 30 pound felt on it and shingle it the same day. Do not, and I'm going to repeat, do not install 30 pound felt get up tomorrow morning and start shingling it. Because the first thing you're gonna notice is that sucker is all rippled just like this right here, like what you're seeing, okay? Don't shingle it because your shingles are gonna look that way. Roofers don't like 30 pound felt. Roofers don't like 15 pound felt. Roofers like synthetic felt. It's quick, it's simple, it's fast, and it's a winner for us, okay? But it's not a winner for you. It's actually a loser for you because synthetic felt will cut the life by 20%. That's not from me. That is from my GAF rep. We went round and round to family. He came out and agreed. Synthetic felt on asphalt shingles cuts the life of the shingle. I'm going to explain that again in a minute. So we spend $2,600 for a 50-year roof. 
Now you have 30. You felt it correctly. You get rid of the square little vents. You put ridge vent across the top of this thing. You make sure your soffit vents are all working properly. You got positive airflow going up to the ridge. You most likely are going to see 40 years out of that roof. Think about it. How fast, and not only that, it's hail resistant. It's storm resistant. If you're paying somebody to do it, make sure you get the extended warranty that's available, then you get the better apple. Because if for some reason something happens, the manufacturer takes care of the problem for you. Part of the warranty. Again, you want it six nailed, not four nailed. You can almost double that strength by six nailing it over four nailing way less chance of issues occur. Okay, so really it's about getting yourself educated here on synthetic felts versus asphalt felts. I love synthetic and synthetic has its place. Because synthetic felt does not have oils in it, it can't extend the life of a shingle. See the old days we use synthetic or we use asphalt felt. A lot of times today, believe it or not, we still use 15. We do not use synthetic felt on an asphalt roof. Totally, totally different than whatever roofing companies are out there. And we can go back head to head. And I don't care about leakage because once the roof is shingled in and everything is sealed, everything is flashed, you should not have leakage. But what you're going to gain with an asphalt paper is the oils. They say the oils are designed to shred. I've heard that, shred water. Once the shingles are over the top of each other, water runs downhill. You get a driving rain and it gets up under the shingles, you're getting leaks. I don't care if you got synthetic felt or tar paper. The fact is you're blowing a nail through the synthetic felt, that's where the water is going to penetrate through. So don't buy the don't buy that. Okay? It can leak upon installation the same as anything else. The fact is all the oils in the shingles as that attic gets hot, as the sun beats on the shingles, as they get older, they start to dry. As they start to dry, guess what happens? They start to pull the oils out of the felt paper. You don't believe me? Go tear a roof off that's 30 years old. The felt paper doesn't come up in a big roll. Typically, it comes up in little bitty squares and pieces. It shreds everywhere. It's totally dry. There is no oil left in that paper. Prime example, if you're putting, you're contracting this roof out, think about this for a minute. You got an estimate, 14,000, 26,000, whatever it may be. If you turned around and think about this for a minute, that roof's only gonna last you 15 years for a 30 year. If I only spent another 2,600 bucks, $100 a square, let's say worst scenario, 2,600 bucks, I double the life out of that product. I get twice as long before I have to replace it. Plus, most likely, it's hail resistant. It's storm resistant. You know, State Farm, American Family, many, many insurance companies give you a discount because you put a heavy, heavy storm resistant shingle on your home. That $2,600, you can easily recoup a loan in savings from the insurance company because they now see you have a class five or a class four impact shingle on the home. There are way more wins than losses. Don't skip out on the shingles because in 15 years, it's not gonna be 10,000, it's not gonna be 14,000, it will be 20. Make sure you get ridge vent. If you got a gable to gable house, get rid of those vents. If you insulate it, you ventilate it, and you felt paper it correctly, you install raglet around the chimney flashings, on the wall runs like you see going on here, you won't have these issues. You won't have them have the insurance company jumping down your throats. So this becomes a win-win for you. Let's do it right and do it once. Your best bang for your dollar, truthfully, is a 50-year product. So with that said, steel roofs. Oh, I almost forgot about metal wheels. We were going to talk about those. All right, the one I got right down the center, the center of the page says, no, corrugated steel does not belong on a house. Where the exposed screws are coming through the top of the roof, 
don't belong on a house. Don't allow it on the house. If you have issues and you got concerns, I, I'll get more into details on it down below. Basically, the neoprene screw, when they penetrate through, that rubber washer either gets put too tight or it's too loose or it's just right and it's 15 years later and it got dried out, now it's leaky. Most states are now outlawing those corrugated roofs on residential properties, on residential homes. You can take and do a standing seam like you see right here there that's a standing seam right here hidden fasteners twice the roof twice the money by the way synthetic felt all day long all the way across it again heat is an issue do not put metal roofs over asphalt i'm not going to go into spilling why right now just don't do it it's going to be your worst nightmare and you're going to end up taking it off peeling shingles i guess if you like tar running down your fascia Go ahead and do it. Um, today, they got tile that looks like, that's metal that looks like tile. Your options are unbelievable. But the catch 22 on it, the average roof today costs 26,000 for the same size roof that was 10 to 14, is 26 to 38,000 today. I'm 50 years old. I will never be putting a metal roof on my house. I will put a 50 year architectural shingle on my house in a minute because that'll be the last roof this old character is ever going to need. All right, with that said, if you guys are getting value out of this, please smack that like button, hit that bell notification and click the next one here which is gonna get into siding and talking a little bit about different types of siding. Very beneficial and hopefully informational for you guys. Have a blessed day. God bless you all. Till next time. See ya.